Good morning. Welcome to Church Online. My name is Thomas, and this is Pastor Rob. We have him with us for Church Online. How's it going, man? Good. I am glad to be with you, Pastor Thomas. It's good to have I'm glad you. to be with our, our online campus. It's good to see you all. Excited to be with you today. Yes, so today we're going to be hopping into uh, our continuing our series, you know, Hope in the Dark. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have Pastor Kaylani speaking today. She's going to crush it. I know that she's been very prayerful, and uh, she's going to talk about hope, uh, uh, hope of heaven. Mm-hmm. And we're re- really discuss, you know, life's challenges and the things that we face, mm-hmm. we all face. And, you know, how can we overcome that with the Lord? So stay tuned. It's going to be good. Um, but uh, yeah, I would love to hop into a conversation and talk a little bit about how do we face, you know, these challenges in life or or maybe we how do we cope with, you know, stress and anxiety? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think that uh, every follower of Jesus has to answer these questions because mm-hmm. life storms do happen. And um, a couple of big picture things that I think are helpful for all of us as followers of Christ. Uh, number one would be honesty, mm. uh, the ability to be honest with ourselves, uh, honest with God, honest with uh, our loved ones about uh, what's happening. You always say this, taking an inventory, mm-hmm. right? So it's yeah. taking, it's, it's searching, uh, search my heart, oh mm-hmm. Lord. Uh, and sometimes uh, that can be difficult, mm-hmm. uh, but the more we practice honesty, yep. uh, the better we get at it yep. and realize that that's a way forward. But also with mm-hmm. honesty is the need for empathy. Mm-hmm. And empathy uh, is empowering. It, it changes us mm-hmm. and yep, uh, we, really in, Christ gives us empathy. Mm-hmm. says that he's the great hype priest who mm-hmm. who knows every one of our weaknesses right like he understands the what we go through yeah. so uh giving empathy to others is also important yeah. and and receiving it mm-hmm. uh but giving it too, practicing giving it to others uh teaches us uh how you know that christ is is truly with us so i think it's so important that we practice honesty and, yeah. and empathy yeah. yeah it's really good i think of just you know, being honest, Mm -hmm. you know, being vulnerable with your brothers and your sisters and your community and the Lord. And I think of, um, you know, in scripture it talks about how when we, you know, when we confess, we are forgiven, Mm -hmm. but when we confess to a brother, Mm -hmm. we are healed and that there's a a healing that's occurring when Mm -hmm. we're honest, Mm -hmm. when we're vulnerable Mm -hmm. with our our hangups, our mistakes, our, our, Mm -hmm. our faults, our sins, Mm -hmm. you know, that, uh, we invite God into that circumstance and that mm-hmm. situation in another brother, and there's healing. Yeah, there's a deep sense of healing. Yeah, so. and that and that takes a ton of courage, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, it often what God reveals, mm-hmm. He wants to heal. Mm-hmm. But what when things are revealed, we can make other decisions uh, that don't lead to growth. Yeah. Uh, we can try and suppress it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can neglect it. We can That's get true. distracted. Yep. I I know for me I. It is easy for me to get distracted as yeah. in, oh, there's that thing. Okay, I'll think about it later and then never think about it again. Yeah. Um, or even, uh, I notice how I said, I'll think about it. Sometimes it's easy to think about things, but feeling them mm-hmm. uh, because our thoughts inform our feelings mm-hmm. and our feelings inform our thoughts. They work mm-hmm. together. And I think it's important to get real, even about our emotions. Now, mm-hmm. uh, emotions are a terrible master. Yeah, uh, but they're a great servant, and we see Jesus mm-hmm. all throughout yeah. the scriptures. Mm-hmm. You see his joy, you see his anger, you see yeah. uh, his excitement. Uh, mm-hmm. That's why I love the uh, the show, The Chosen, because right? yeah. you see the uh, the humanity mm-hmm. of, of Jesus mm-hmm. in that. So yeah, honesty, empathy, yeah. super important. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, just thinking about that empathy as well, and just like creating a space uh, for people to feel safe mm-hmm. and feel mm-hmm. like they have the permission. Mm-hmm. To, mm-hmm. to share about mm-hmm. things that are on their heart mm-hmm. and uh, just really, just kind of creating that sense of security yeah. for people. Yeah, um, That's really good. So I want to hop into uh, any any strategies, anything that you can share, you know, with our online audience that that maybe you, you implement? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think at first I'd say it has been a, a constant journey, so I'm mm-hmm. no uh, expert at this. Uh, it's a everyday journey. Uh, deal mm-hmm. <laughs> of how to walk with Jesus. And uh, I don't always get it right. And that's okay. God's grace truly is mm-hmm. enough. I, yeah. I like to say, uh, God's grace looks amazing on you. Like as in, mm-hmm. we don't have that's to carry, good. you yeah. know, okay. I had, it wasn't a great day, mm-hmm. but God's grace is still amazing. Um, that's really good. but I, I think, uh, uh, seasons change. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think right now, uh, one of the big practices I've been focusing on, uh, daily, uh, is been, uh, silence mm-hmm. and, uh, 
that's not easy for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's been a, a very challenging journey, but mm-hmm. one that's been worth it. I've been focused on Habakkuk 2.20, mm-hmm. uh, the scripture that says, but the Lord sits in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence mm-hmm. before him. So when I'm silent, I'm reminded that the, I don't have to think through every problem mm-hmm. or fix everything or mm-hmm. uh, try to control, uh, you know, my present or my future, yeah. I can sit and know that God is on the throne and mm-hmm. I can um, relax in his presence. So silence has certainly yeah. been one of them. Yeah. That's really good. I think of a Selah, you mm-hmm. know, a Selah moment, like mm-hmm. the psalmist said, like to stop, just to pause, just to breathe and just to really marinate yeah. on the scripture, on the moment, maybe on your circumstance or the challenge and just really invite God mm-hmm. into that circumstance or that mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really, you know, helpful. Yeah, and I love how the Psalms, they have that, right? It's like, so our life should be a psalm, mm-hmm. in a sense, right? A song to God, yeah. where we have Selah moments, and mm-hmm. we stop and we breathe in mm-hmm. God's goodness. I'm glad you brought that up, because that's another practice that I think all of us can do, mm-hmm. uh, which is simply to to breathe in God's goodness, right? Yes. Take a deep breath, and uh, this isn't like... Uh, you know, sometimes people get fearful of new age spirituality. Yeah. Uh, breathing in scripture mm-hmm. has been a practice of the church for 2,000 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it's a recovering practice mm-hmm. that we need to find today yeah. because uh, taking a deep breath and breathing it in. So one of my favorite ones is uh, is peace or even say shalom. Yeah. Uh, so breathe in and say shalom. Let's do that. Let's do it. Do okay, we're going to do it. Do it. online do, audience. On do that home. with us. Yeah. Do it at home, uh, wherever you're at, wherever you're yeah. tuning in. Yep. Yeah. You got your kids, along. do it together. I do it with my daughters all the time. Yeah, so I mean, we're going to breathe in. We're going to say yeah. peace, and peace. then we're going to breathe out and say not of this world. Peace. Not of, not this, of world. this world. One more time. Peace. Peace. Not of, not this, of this world. world. One more time. Peace. Peace. Not of this world. Not of this world. So I might be in a, uh, you know, having a rough day or or, or mm-hmm. not feel peace, not yeah. be at peace, right? Um, and I know that's the case. One of my signals is if my mind is racing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not even racing about bad things. Sometimes it's really good things. Yeah. But uh, I have to ask myself, okay, am I, uh, am I trying to control this right now? Um, or can I relax and know that Jesus is truly... Mm-hmm with me yeah. in this task or this mm-hmm. challenge or this opportunity in front mm-hmm. of me. So uh, definitely soul talks as another one. Yeah. That's what we're doing right now. Yeah. Uh, just get, being real with each mm-hmm. other. Um, and, and it's important that we have these types of moments mm-hmm. where I, I share my soul, you share mm-hmm. yours and um, Christ is present mm-hmm. with us when, when we yeah. do that. Uh, last one I'll say is uh, a Sabbath, mm-hmm. uh, taking a day of rest and Christ mm-hmm. is our Sabbath. Okay. Lord, help me. Yeah. Help me be better. Lord. <laughs> well, and, and it's not, it's, it's something that I'm always having to uh, fight to not fight so much, right. Mm-hmm. To just take a, a, a rest and, yeah, that's good. and 24 hours. And it's really not, let me just do whatever I want. It's 20, it's a, it's a day of peace. So go on mm-hmm. a, go on a walk, yep. uh, breathe in God's goodness. I mean, the Psalm 23, mm-hmm. uh, we're supposed to even have rest in that. God, even when we're walking through a valley. Mm-hmm. So take a Psalm. Uh, sometimes I'll go out, kid you not, I'll go skip like a kid Come on. and, 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 yes, and shout out a Psalm yeah. and, and remember that God is truly on, on the throne. So That's yeah. Great. Yeah. How about you? What, what are, what's the strategy that you've been trying yeah. to put in? Lately? I love all that, what you said. So I'm definitely going <laughs> to continue to implement those things. Um, for me, I would say just scripture meditating on the word. Mm-hmm. You know, I think of Philippians four, six through eight, mm-hmm. you know, um, be anxious for nothing, but in all things with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses mm-hmm. all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And it's just like, that's a promise. Right. God right. promises us mm-hmm. peace. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. when they're, when we worry, when mm-hmm. we're anxious mm-hmm. for our hearts and our minds. Mm-hmm. And then he goes on uh, um, in Philippians as well. It talks about uh, what we should think about. Right. We should think about things that are true, mm-hmm. noble, praiseworthy. Meditate on these things. 
you know, Meditate. Pastor Thomas, I'm glad we're talking about this because we've been promoting this thriving mm-hmm. faith conference, yeah. how to get unstuck in your emotional, mm-hmm. mental, great. and relational health. Uh, we'll have doctors of psychology here, mm-hmm. Bill and Christy Galtier. Yes. And uh, they're authors of this book, uh, Journey of the Soul, and, and several others. And I, I think it's a journey that we're excited to go on. So mm-hmm. really encourage uh, our online campus. If you're here, yeah. join us on Saturday, Bethel.org slash thriving. Uh, but if uh, you're not here, we're going to have them on Sunday, too, uh, speaking at our 9 and 11 a.m. worship gatherings. It's going to be great. Amen. Mm-hmm. And don't forget to uh, be there, but also like this video, share this video with a friend. Invite somebody to church. Th- grab the YouTube link. Put it in your phone. Text somebody this morning. Get somebody here in church. Uh, but we are excited for Pastor Kehlani, and yes. let's prepare our hearts. Let's get ready. Let's go to worship. Amen.
Yes, right? He's good today, church, and he's worthy of our worship today. He's worthy of our praise today. Would you pray with me today? Lord Jesus, thank you that you are good. Uh, you are always good. Sometimes life can be tough, but you are good, and we celebrate that this morning. We celebrate that truth today, Lord Jesus. No matter where we might find ourselves today, whether we're online today or in our Santa Clara campus today or right here in the house at San Jose, chances are there are some that need you. They just need your touch today. They need your provision today, your strength today, Lord. And uh, you're more than willing because you're good uh, to meet us where we're at. You meet us at our point of need today. And I pray for those that need supernatural healing, that you would unleash gifts of healing in the name of Jesus. You'd bring physical healing today. God, we pray that you'd bring emotional healing today, and Lord, that you would bring relational healing today, We're healing in families and marriages, Lord. We pray for your provision today. Lord, that you'll meet all of our, all of our needs according to your glorious riches that are in Christ Jesus today. Lord, we're, we're grateful you're more than enough. We pray for jobs and better jobs today. Open the door, Lord. Open the door. You're bigger than tough economies. You're just bigger. And so, Lord, we trust you today. Continue to bring your strength and your wisdom today. God, for those that feel discouraged and down, they feel lonely today, God, I just pray that you touch them with your love and with your peace today. I speak the peace of Jesus over this place today. I pray that you'll have your way. Lord, we pray. We pray for our own county and our own city, our state, and this nation that's in turmoil, that you'll break in. You'll break in. You're so much bigger. God, you're bigger than the world stage. You're so much bigger today. And we pray for breakthroughs today. We pray for your protection over the nation of Israel today as they have been attacked again. And Lord, we pray that you would bring people to faith in Jesus Christ. We pray for their leaders today that you give them wisdom. We pray, God, that you would keep these terrorist attack away from them and that you would break in on the terrorists, Lord, that you'd change their life today. Lord, thank you for what you're doing in the Middle East that we never hear about on the news, but you're at work. You're at work in Iran in the underground, Lord, the underground church. Today, there are many that are coming to faith in Jesus, and we just pray that you would bring a complete breakthrough in that region. We pray for wisdom today over our leaders in our country today. And Lord, we pray today that you would continue to cause hope to rise up in us today, Lord. Open our eyes, open our ears, and open our hearts to what you want us to see and to hear today. We offer ourselves to you, and we give you thanks in the strong name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. That means so be it, or it means I agree today. God is good today, and we celebrate him today. Why don't you take just a moment and turn around and greet somebody. Say welcome to Sunday as you find your seat. Give them a fist bump or a high five today. Well, God bless you today. It's uh, so good to have you, everybody, online. If you happen to be a guest with us today, maybe it's your first or second time, uh, if you take a moment and fill out the Connect card that's in the seat in front of you, uh, we just invite you to do that. Um, if you'd like to do something digital, there's QR codes that are in the seats in front of you. You can scan that QR code, and uh, there's all kinds of stuff that'll come up. One of those things will be a Connect card. If you're online today, uh, in the chat, you'll see a link, and if you'll uh, fill the card out, whether it's digital or whether it's physical, if it's physical today, hold on to it at the end of this gathering. As you exit through the doors, you'll see the welcome banners. There'll be people there, and uh, 
You can give them that card, and we'll make sure and send you a free gift. We're glad that you're here today, and uh, church family, help me welcome our guests today. We say welcome to you. We're glad that you're here. Everybody online, glad for your turn, tuning in, as well as those at Santa Clara today. If you don't, if you don't have a church family, uh, we just invite you to be a part of Bethel. Lots of new people. We're excited about what God is up to in and through uh, this church, and uh, we'd love to have you be a part. Also want to thank all of you who call Bethel home. If you're a guest today, uh, we, we, we talk about giving back, and we give back with our life, and one of the ways we do that is through our finances. And if you're a guest today, obviously we're not asking you to give back. This service is our gift to you, but if you are a part of the Bethel family, um, thank you for your faithfulness. And many of you are learning what it means to tithe, what it means to actually give back financially to God. Uh, you're learning how to give sacrificially um, through offerings. Uh, this is the part of the life of a disciple, okay? It's the part of the life of a disciple, uh, a follower uh, of Jesus. And I'm just grateful for uh, all of you that are continuing to grow uh, in this giving financially. But it isn't just, and by the way, there's lots of ways to give back financially. Uh, please take a look at those and let us know if we can help you with anything uh, today. But it's not just our, our money, it's also our time and it's also our talent. And uh, one of the things that we do and we've done for the four years that I've been here is on every first and third Thursday, uh, we partner with Second Harvest Food Distribution and we distribute food to those in our community. It's shocking to see how many people have come week after week, month after month, year after year, and the lines do not go down. And if you'd like to be a part of distributing that, uh, we could use some help. And uh, you just need to let us know, call the church office, or you can fill it out right on the Connect card. Just say food distribution. And we'll uh, make sure and get you plugged in. Uh, we're excited about the, the relationships we have built with our community because many of the same people come again and again and again. And so it's an opportunity for us to build relationships with our community while meeting tangible needs. We meet lots of, need, lots of needs around here at Bethel. We don't talk about it a lot, but there are people in crisis every week. And whether we're helping them financially or whether we're helping them uh, through prayer or through uh, counsel, uh, it happens all the time. So whenever you give back, whether it's your time, your talent, or your treasure, your money, uh, just know that it makes a difference week in and week out. Now, let me uh, mention real quickly a couple of things that are coming up. Our Thriving Faith Conference is next weekend. Hard to believe. Next weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, it's going to be a phenomenal time. The Gutierrez are going to be here with us, and uh, they're going to be here on the Sunday as well. They're going to speak in both of our our gatherings on Sunday, but they're going to be doing breakout sessions on Saturday. If you just go to Bethel.org slash thriving, slash thriving, and you can sign up for the Saturday. There is a cost involved, a minimal cost. These are top-notch leaders, and uh, it's, it, it's the whole idea, the whole theme is really learning how to get free from those things that hold us down, whether it's mentally or it's emotionally or relationally, okay? How to get unstuck. And uh, so they're gonna talk a lot about that. It's gonna be a powerful weekend. Make sure you prioritize it and make sure you invite somebody to it. This isn't just for uh, Christians in the area, it's for anybody, okay? And so I just really encourage you uh, to prioritize that and to be a part of it. And then finally, let me just put a bug in your ear, ladies, for Mother's Day. It's hard to believe that it's coming up right? It's coming up in our Mother's Day event, and it's not just for mothers, it's for all women. It's going to be a little early this year. It's going to be May 4th, so keep that date in mind, May 4th. It's a wonderful event on that Saturday. Great event to invite people that aren't connected to any church, okay? And so uh, I just encourage you to, to uh, go to our website, again, Bethel.org slash women, and you can find out all the information there. I want you to watch this short video clip.
projects at the end of this month. That was just a teaser. Be praying what God would have you do as we make a difference both in our neighborhoods and our nations. church. Well, thank you. First, I want to give, a, a give just a big shout out and a thank you to Pastor Frank for the opportunity to be here and share with you today. Um, we are blessed, church, to be under the authority and leadership of Pastor Frank and Laura at the helm. So can we just give them some honor uh, this morning? We love you. We're grateful for you. Uh, we're so, 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 so thankful. Um, my name is Kaylani. If you don't know me, um, I'm the youth pastor here at Bethel Church. Hello and good morning. And just to get to know me a little bit more, I thought I'd share a little bit about my family. So here's a photo of us uh, from this past Easter. Maybe many of you guys have taken a similar photo at the same Easter wall. Um, if my husband looks familiar and you have an elementary age student, that is because he is our kids pastor here. So Pastor Jonathan is also here in the room with us today. Our kids, Alakai, seven, and Kyla, three. Really quick, I just have to point out something with our son. Just to give you a picture of who our kids are, if you guys can just zoom in and look on his hand. I don't know if you guys can all see it, but in his hand, he has a, he's taking a picture like this. We didn't notice till after we took the picture. He's got a little mini figure of Jesus in his palm, and he's like, Jesus needed to be in the picture too, Mom. And I was <laughs> It was the sweetest thing. So that is our son in a nutshell. Meanwhile, Kyla, we could barely get her to look at um, the camera without putting candy in her hand physically. So yeah, she's holding candy in her hand because we're like, here, have a candy, love smile. So that is a quick glimpse of our family. Um, one important member that we cannot leave out because she was first to arrive before the two kids is our fur baby. That is Pebbles, our dog. This is a photo of her. She is our English bulldog. Uh, don't let her face fool you. She is, she's an old lady. She is almost 10 years old, which is like ancient in dog years. Um, and so she is just the sweetest thing ever as well. Uh, but beware, if you start petting her, you can never stop. She will not let you stop petting her. Um, and another, one more shout out I want to give, uh, probably embarrass them a little bit, but my family, they came all the way here from Sacramento in the back over there. Shout out to them for making the drive. They made the drive all the way out here. And I don't know if you guys know, um, but the drive from Sacramento or the Valley, how many of you are familiar with the drive from the Bay back over there, Lincoln, Rockland, Roseville area? Yeah, it's a drive. It's a drive, and that's without traffic. You throw traffic into the mix, and that becomes a journey. That drive becomes a journey, and it becomes kind of a game. We play this game like, can we make it there with the rest of our gas tank that we have? Can we make it there without taking a bathroom break? And then it, it's like a race, like, okay, can I beat my time from yesterday? Can I get there faster? You know, obviously within the speed limits and everything. Um, but it becomes a journey. It can be a journey. And that's exactly the journey that we took Six years ago in 2018, when we joined this staff team, we moved from the Sacramento area to the Bay Area. And it was really funny. As we shared that with our friends and our family members, we were repeatedly given kind of the same feedback and the same question. And it was like, hold on, um, aren't you moving in the wrong direction? Usually people move from the Bay Area to the Valley. They move away from the, the higher tech, the faster paced life to a easier, slower paced Valley life. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. And even today it is still true. But for us, it wasn't about convenience or ease of life. It was about being obedient to what we felt the Lord was putting on us, the call that he placed um, before us. Now with that, with that, it came quite the journey of our own that we, we found out in our first year, maybe two years here. 
To briefly sum it up for you, as soon as we arrived, oh, let me show you a picture really quick of the a picture of us when we got here. This was us six years ago, almost same location, right out the front of the church. As you can see, Alakai, the one holding little baby Jesus, is younger than Kyla. He just turned one when we got here. So this is him one year and a couple weeks old. Um, we look a lot different. The church is a lot different. We're just in a different space. Praise the Lord for that. And uh, so as we made the journey here, Alakai just got over his first year. We're like, man, got one year down of parenting. We got this. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so we encroached on this next season of life as soon as we move here. Luckily, we found an apartment pretty fast. We were very grateful for that. Mind you, it was on the third floor, no elevator. So that was rough. Uh, One-year-old groceries, it was a whole thing. Um, and then as we get settled, we're reaching out to our neighbors. We go downstairs, get to meet her, and she was not happy that we moved in. And I know that because she told me uh, to my face, <laughs> rather screamed it at my face and let me know. And I was like, oh, I am so sorry. Uh, yeah. And so after that, we go about our business, living our life, taking our dog on walks up and down three flights of stairs, where later after that, our dog gets attacked by another dog, ends up in vet visits. It creates this fear and anxiety in our dog. So now we have this 50-pound dog who doesn't want to go down three flights of stairs to go to the bathroom several times a day. So usually we have to carry this dog down three flights of stairs without falling down ourselves. And remember, like when we moved here, Alakai was just one, and he was walking, and he was doing great, but he was also facing sickness. For our first six months here, he had several different viruses, illnesses. We were in and out of the hospital. So most of the time, we're carrying a sick son with a 50-pound dog down three flights of stairs and then back up again, trying to keep him bundled, trying to keep her from falling. And she's like flailing around because dogs shouldn't be like carried like that. And so it was, it was a journey. It was a journey. And just to top it off, my car then got stolen twice in two months. And that was just our first year here. That was our welcoming year here. After that, we go into our second year. We had lots of staff changes and then a global pandemic. Welcome to San Jose. That was our welcome. Now, I say all of that and I share all of that to share a little bit about ourselves, but also because as I read our scripture and studied our scripture for today, it was a reminding thought of the letter that Peter was writing. Peter is writing a letter to Christians facing persecution and hardship. Now, I'm not saying we were persecuted by any means. I'm saying that we faced some hardship in our first year and to second year here. And it was an encouragement. And I believe that the message that Peter had for the believers then is also a message for us as believers today. So as we get into this, I want us to agree, maybe we can all agree that we've all faced hardship, suffering, trial, some kind of hurt or pain in this world. And we're going to jump into the scripture and see how Peter encourages the believers. But uh, first, let's, let's take a minute and pray. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit at work in and through our hearts, in and through uh, your holy word, through the Bible. I pray that you would encourage us today as we all take a step of faith in different journeys, at different seasons of life, at different seasons of our faith. God, speak to us. Speak to us today in Jesus' name, amen. Now, as we recap, for the past several weeks, Pastor Frank has been teaching us and walking us through the book of 1 Peter. Today, we're going to be reading out of 1 Peter chapter 3, and we're going to dig into this letter and this message for the Christians. Now, the Christians that he's speaking to are church members, early church members, who are now scattered across several different countries. They're exiles. They're alone. They're separated from the church community. They're separated from other believers, and they are facing outright persecution. They are facing opposition to the gospel message that they're carrying every step of the way. And the message they're sharing is the life that we have in Christ, the freedom of salvation that we have, the hope for eternity. And I've titled today's message, The Hope for Heaven, because it's, as we read this scripture, it's my prayer that the Holy Spirit would remind us of the great hope that we have for things that have not yet come. So let's read. We're going to start in verse 17, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 17, um, because I know Pastor Frank left off on that last week, but it really leads into our scripture today. So 1 Peter chapter 3, 
verse 17, it says, For it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the baptism that now saves you. Oh, sorry. The, but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. Amen. Peter's reminder to the believers is that, hey, listen, I get it. It's happening. You're believers. You're being persecuted. Yes. But don't forget, so was Jesus. He's reminding them that, hey, if you are going to suffer persecution, make the choice of suffering for doing good. Don't turn to evil. Don't suffer for doing evil. Suffer for doing good. It is hard, but choose the righteous life. Choose a, a godly life. And again, they weren't facing human challenges. They weren't facing challenges that we face, like waking up in the morning and my daughter gives me attitude before we even like get out of the house. Before I even like leave my bedroom, she's already like yelling at me. Like not like that. It's not like my coffee order was messed up and now I'm even later to where I was supposed to go. Not that that happens, Pastor Frank, just letting you know. Uh, you know, it's not that, that that's the case. This is outright persecution. This is opposition to them as people. Some of these believers are being jailed. Some of them are being taken away. They are just facing complete opposition. And Peter's message to them is a message that I think is for us as well today, to stand firm in our faith in the face of trials and continue to live in, God's obedi in, in obedience to God's call on our life. He's called us all. He's commissioned us all to go and make disciples of all nations. And I think this is why, because Christ's suffering is our victory. That's the first point in today's outline. Our hope for heaven lies where, because we have Christ's suffering as our victory. Going back to the scripture, verse 18, it says, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body and made alive in the spirit. It started on our, on our behalf. It was us. Let's make this clear. Christ's suffering on the cross was our fault. He, the righteous, the perfect, the blameless, took the cross that was due, the payment that was due for each of us and to all of us who are the unrighteous, the sinners, and the undeserving, so that we can be brought back to a relationship with God. Now, this started with Adam and Eve. Don't get mad at me. I know some people are like, what do you mean? It's my fault Jesus went to the cross? Yeah, but listen, listen, listen. So it started with Adam and Eve. When they first disobeyed in the beginning, it opened a door, so to speak, to allow sin, death, suffering, and pain to enter our world. From that point on, everybody was born with sin. Everybody was born a sinner. We deserved a life separated from God. The only way that a God, a righteous, justified God, could accept an unjust human required a sacrifice because he is justice. He is all good authority. Romans tells us the wages of sin, the payment of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. It's out of his love for us. He made a way for us to get back to him, giving us an, an opportunity for an eternal life in heaven by sending his one and only son to make the payment on our behalf. You might be in here thinking, oof, she doesn't know my story. She doesn't know what I've done. You don't know the thoughts I'm thinking right now. You don't know the actions I've taken. And you're right, I do not. But God does. God does, and he loves you still. 
He loves you in spite of you. He loves you in spite of your actions and your thoughts. And he loves you so much that knowing what you are going to do, knowing what we were going to do, the decisions, the choices that I've made that have separated me from God, he still sent his son, Jesus, to die for each and every one of us. Why? Because of his love for us. John 3, 16 explains it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. While we were still sinning, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring us to God. Him for us. I think as believers, if you've been on a faith journey with Jesus for a while, I think oftentimes we can forget that we're not here by anything that we've necessarily achieved or done for God. Yes, we make a choice to follow God, to serve God, to walk in obedience, yes. But it's not by our doing. It's because of God's great love for us. It's because of the opportunity that he gave us that we're here today. Because our best on our own is never enough. The Bible says our, our, fit, our goodness, our righteousness is like filthy rags compared to God's good glory. So we can't boast in anything except for his grace and love. We just sang about that. It's because of his great grace and love for us. So why would he even allow it in the first place? Why did he allow sin and disobedience and hardship? Why did he even do that? Couldn't he just get rid of it? Yeah, he could. So with it would go our free choice, our free will, our ability to make our own decisions. He gave us an opportunity to choose. He gives us free will to choose our life. And then we get mad at him when he's a good judge and a fair judge because of it. He gives us the ability to make the path we want to make. And God is a righteous and fair judge. No matter what we choose, we need to all understand that there is one day where all of us will give an account before God for what we do. So how is that our victory? Why would I choose suffering for doing good? Why is that a choice I would want to make? Because we know that one day all opposition, all un injustice, wrongdoing, suffering, trial, and hardship will be made right, justified, healed, and whole, and we will have overwhelming victory and vindication only by the power of Jesus. Amen. That's where we put our hope. That's what we focus our sights on. And let me tell you, when we do, it changes everything. It changes everything. His suffering is our victory because he conquered death by the power of the Holy Spirit. Back to scripture, it says, he was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. We just celebrated this Easter Sunday a couple weeks ago. That's the whole point of Resurrection Sunday. Jesus died on the cross for us. He was raised from the grave three days later by the power of the Spirit. Why? Proving his overall authority and vindication over death, hell, and the grave. The biggest separation and the biggest hardship that we face in this world. When we take our eyes off of our earthly things, when we focus our eyes on the importance of the eternal life, not this temporary one, we can manage any trial because we know that they're not going to last forever. And in the midst of it, we're not going through it alone. And I'm not talking just by the power of the Holy Spirit. Like, that's huge. But let's be practical. That's what church community is for, am I right? To live this life out with one another, to support one another in fellowship, the community of believers. And maybe you're here today and you're saying, I don't have a relationship with God. You've been feeling like maybe you've been facing suffering and, suffering and hardship alone. Maybe you do have a relationship with God and you still feel like you're facing this thing alone. I want to encourage you that when we, invite the, when we invite Jesus into our hearts, the Holy Spirit, the same power that raised Christ from the dead, is invited to come into our lives and is with us filling us and is guiding us by the power of his spirit every step of our journey throughout this life until he comes back. We are never alone. He will never leave us or forsake us. 
going back to the text, verse 19 and 20, it says, after being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. All right, grab up some water. Now this verse, this scripture, let me be honest with you. As I've studied this, I found several conflicting views as to what it actually meant. Some scholars believe that Jesus himself descended to hell, made a proclamation of salvation and returned. Other scholars are like, absolutely not. It was the spirit at work. It was other things. There's a lot of disagreement on this. But however, there is one thing that all of us agree on. And that is this, that no matter what way you read this scripture, interpret this scripture or slice it, no person, spirit, thing, or power is out of the reach of the authority and power of Jesus Christ. So going back into our scripture, verse 20, verse 20 through 22, it says, In it, only a few people, eight and all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. Water baptism, it's an inward cleansing of our heart and our minds. It's not an outward cleansing. We call that a shower. Uh, it's, an, it's an inward cleansing, okay? It's an inward cleansing. Please, yeah, all right. When we choose to be water baptized, we are given a clear conscience. A clear conscience let me ask you this. Do you know what it's like to not have a clear conscience? There's been decisions in my life that I've made that I've been so ashamed about. I felt so guilty about. Man, that weighs heavy in my mind, in my heart. And it changes. It changes the way I act, I respond, how I talk, how I think. Man, when we have a heavy mindset, it changes everything that we do. And when we have a relationship with Jesus, when we choose a life, when we get water baptized, we're making a choice saying, Lord, make me new. Forgive me of my sins. Wipe me clean. Give me a clear conscience. And he is faithful and just to do what he says he will do. And when we walk in freedom of a clear conscience, that also changes everything. It changes the way we act, the way we think. And that's why our Thriving Faith Conference on Saturday the 20th is so important because we're talking about living a life of faith while also how do we do this with a healthy mental, relational, emotional balance. There's a freedom that comes when we walk with Jesus. And there's a cleansing that comes when we choose to be water baptized, water baptized after that decision. Verse 21, it says, It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. We have hope for heaven because we recognize that Christ's suffering is our victory. And second, ultimate justice and authority are found in Jesus Christ alone. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He gives us comfort and peace. He guides us on our faith journey while we wait because there will be a day when he comes back and he will make all things new. Jesus was really great at preparing people for this. And I think Peter was really great at encouraging the believers in this. And in John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his death. And he tells them, hey, I've told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. Thanks, Jesus, right? Like, hey, just a heads up, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Like, that's such a mic drop verse. I love that verse because he's just like, yeah, you're going to have trouble. It's going to be rough. But I've overcome it. Like, back with a flash. Like, we just, it gets me so excited every time I read that. 
because it's just such a great reminder that all authority on heaven and earth, all justice, everything will be made new, everything will be made right. Even if we don't see it in this lifetime, we will see it in the future. A huge pillar and inspiration to the faith community, Billy Graham was quoted saying this, saying, the will of God did not take me anywhere. The grace of God did not sustain me. The will of God did not take me anywhere. The grace of God did not sustain me. I think that's a now word for us today. Where's God placed you? Six years ago, God placed us here in San Jose. Where's God placed you? What job are you working at? Who's your neighbor? Yes, even those ones. Who's the neighbors that God is asking you to be a light to, to minister to? Where's God placed you? Because wherever he's placed you, his grace will sustain you and he will be with you in the midst of all of it. We're not alone. We're not alone in our pain and in our suffering. We just have to choose. Do, do we trust him? Do we trust him with the outcomes? Man, that's hard for a perfectionist. I can't trust you with the outcome of my life, Lord. I can't trust you with the, the outcome of the things that I, I'm speaking for myself, by the way, if you're wondering. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, how do I trust you with how this is going to turn out? I've got to control it. I've got to plan it A through Z. I need to know every step of the way. And God is asking us, do you trust me? He asked us that repeatedly as our son was facing sickness after sickness and illness after illness for six months straight. Do you trust me? My God, you have the power and authority to heal him. Just do it already. Ask, we're asking, we're praying, we're seeking. Heal my son. Do you trust him? Because of that trust that we put into God. That was the only thing that was able to get us through that first year, two years of our journey here. Because we knew that, you know what, God, we, we do trust you. We trust you with the outcome. We trust you with our life. We trust you with our faith. We don't know what's going to take place next, clearly, or else we would not have chosen the path we did, right? I mean, man, if he said, hey, I'd love for you to go here, but first, just know you're going to be facing sickness, illness, financial burden, your car's going to be stolen, your dog's going to get sick, you know, all of that. Yeah, sign me up. No, it might, maybe not. Maybe it'll change. I think, I think sometimes God hides those things from us, right? And you're just like, all right, let's see. Anyways. Do we trust God? Because we put our faith and our hope in God. We said, God, we trust you with the outcome. If our son stays sick, we're going to trust you. If our hardship doesn't end, we're going to trust you. If something else comes our way, we're going to trust you. Why? Because maybe not in this lifetime will my son see healing, but we know that God is coming back. Jesus is going to return and make all things new. And when we focus our eyes on the eternal things, we can get through anything that this world throws our way. Why? Because we can take heart because Jesus has overcome this world. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says this, So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient. It means they're fleeting, they're passing, they're brief. But the things that are unseen are eternal. They're everlasting. They're endless. And I understand we're all at different faith journeys journey steps in our life. We're all at a different phase in our life. Maybe you've been serving the Lord forever. Can't even remember when you got saved because you just like came out the womb praising the Lord. Maybe you came to the Lord and entered into a relationship with him later in life. Maybe you still don't have a relationship with the Lord and you're trying to figure this thing out. 
Wherever you're at, Peter was encouraging us and he was telling us, you got this. Jesus made a way for you. You got this. Jesus is with you. You got this. He's going to make all things right. He's going to make all things new. But I want to challenge us today and think about whatever phase we're in in our faith, whatever step we're in, I want you to take the next step. When I suffer, what is my faith response? When I face hardship, what is my faith response? What is my next step of faith today? Am I trusting God with the outcome? Am I holding on to things too tightly? Am I focusing my eyes on earthly things instead of eternal things? Where's our hope at today? Wherever God is leading you, I hope to encourage you to keep our hope on heavenly things, eternal things. Let's keep our eyes on heaven because there's hope for heaven when Jesus comes back. Will you stand with me as I pray for you? We all just stand to our feet if you're able. Before we dismiss for today, I want to pray for you. And then I want to encourage us to take that faith step. And maybe you just need to write it down. Say, today I will, you fill in the blank. Today I want to, or today, whatever it is. And you write that faith step down. But I also want to give us an opportunity to respond physically. So let's, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your love and grace that gave us a way back to you, not because of us, but in spite of us. You've given us hope for heaven, God, because you love us, you've made us new. We are new creations in you. Let us walk in that authority, God. Let us walk knowing that you are with us, that you are for us and not against us, that you never leave us or forsake us, but you have a hope for us. There's a good future for us when we keep our eyes and our hope in you. God, I pray that you just meet everyone where they're at right now. Lord, touch their hearts. Encourage them by the power of your Holy Spirit. Do what only you can do. Lord, for those who want to invite Jesus into their life, God, I pray that you would meet them, forgive them. Let them feel your Holy Spirit fill them right now. And if that's you today, I just want to encourage you. You've never invited him into your life. Maybe you've distanced yourself to God. You're saying, I'm coming back. I encourage you just to invite him into your heart right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, I come as I am. Forgive me for living my life apart from you. But God, I invite you to come into my life, into my heart. Be the leader and Lord of my life today. I recognize the authority lives and resides in you and you alone. And I put my hope and my trust in you today. In Jesus' name, amen. So I encourage you to, yes, write down your next faith step. Maybe it's saying, God, I'm going to take a faith step towards getting to know who you are, entering into this relationship with you. Maybe you're saying, you know what? I needed Peter's encouragement. I can do this. Maybe it's taking a breath in of endurance and patience, saying, God, I'm going to trust you with the outcome in spite of what I'm facing. And maybe you're saying, hey, I just need to fix my eyes on heavenly things. I've lost sight. My eyes have wandered. And I need to remember that my eyes lie in eternal things that are yet to come, not on the temporary earthly things that we're facing today. So as a response, as a response to God, I want to invite you to come and take a step forward and fill this altar space in response to worship as a physical symbol saying, yes, God, I am moving myself to position myself in a place to focus on heavenly things, not on earthly things, to choose you over the things that I'm facing, over the the frustrations I might be feeling and shifting my focus from the current world towards an eternal one, saying, Jesus, I turn to you as author, finisher, and perfecter of my faith. Lord, let's respond in worship together.
I love that hymn. You know, the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his mercy and grace. Hope you were encouraged today, Church Online. If you were blessed by Pastor Kaylani's message today, let her know. Show some love in the chat and share this video with a friend. And don't forget to like, subscribe, all that jazz. But we are going to enter into a time of prayer. Uh, so if you would like prayer, please go ahead and put your prayer request in the chat and we'll pray. Okay, so let's enter into a time of prayer. Our first prayer is for Lana. God, we lift up Lana to you, Lord. We thank you, God, for her heart to just know you, Lord, and uh, what you're doing in her life. And we pray for her job opportunity, God, that the right doors would be open, the right uh, connections would be made, and that you would put her in a space for her to be a witness, to be a testimony, to be a light, to be a voice of hope in uh, a world of darkness, God. Our world needs hope, God, and I pray that you'd anoint Lana to do that. And we pray for favor when it comes to her job search. Lord, we also thank you, God, for Diane and just the healing that's already occurred in her life. We want to come into agreement and believe for complete healing, God, that you are our great physician, our healer. And we are declaring healing over her eye in Jesus' name. Lord, and we also want to lift up Benjamin. He's got a cough right now, and it's been over a week. And we just ask that it would stop in Jesus' name, Lord, that um, he would be completely recovered and he would uh, be full of uh, just your strength and feel completely rested, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you all. And I want to remind you, we have our Thriving Faith Conference this Saturday at 9 a.m. You can register today. It's going to be epic. It's going to be practical handles on how we can get unstuck in our emotional, uh, mental, and relational health. And you can learn more about Thriving Faith Conference at Bethel.org slash thriving. Again, be a part of it. Invite a friend. It's going to be awesome. That'll be on Saturday. And then we also will have Sunday. But God bless you. Praying for you. Have a great week. Take care.